You don't know Namor, the submariner? Uh, submariner. From the underwater kingdom of Atlantis? Well, get ready to meet the world's first aquatic superhero, Marvel's first mutant, and the longest running hero, well, villain, anti hero? In Marvel Comics, Namor, the submariner. Get those little ankle wings a fluttering, because it's time for a brief history. When Antarctic explorers began destroying the ocean, the Atlantean princess Fenn volunteered to knock some sense into him. Instead, she made the ship's captain, Leonard Mackenzie, her first mate. Thinking she was captured, the Atlanteans brought her home, where she gave birth to the new prince and future king, Namor Mackenzie. Half Atlantean, half human mutant, all short short. Namor grew to have a host of Atlantean and mutant abilities, breathing both air and water, massively increased strength, durability, and speed, slowed aging, and of course, incredible swimming abilities. Plus, he has these cute little wings in his ankles that allow him to fly. But perhaps his greatest ability? His enormous ego, <laughs> cultivated with his trademark battle cry, Imperious Rex which loosely translates to, I'm the king of the alphas, fight me. When Namor came of age, he returned to the surface to finish his mother's work and protect the ocean from threats above and below with the help of his cousin, Lady Dorma. So when the battle was brought to the ocean in World War II, Namor was not having it. He even went so far as teaming up with surface-dwelling heroes called the Invaders, Human Torch, his sidekick Toro, Captain America, Bucky, and other allies. Eventually, the war ended and Namor split his time terrorizing humans in air, sea, and land until he went missing. Johnny Storm of the Fantastic Four discovered Namor was living as a homeless man with amnesia. Johnny burned off Namor's beard, which does not seem like the safest way to get a makeover, and taking to the water, Namor remembered his former mission to beat the ever-loving heck out of the surface dwellers, and that included the Fantastic Four in part because Namor only had eyes for Sue Storm, who was already coupled up with Mr. Fantastic. It was a lot of attention for a woman who wants to be invisible. Over the years, Namor finally moved on to make begrudging peace with the surface, which might have been aided by Doctor Strange enchanting Namor to join his team of defenders, or by his old friendship with Cap of the Avengers. But Namor also faced threats to his crown below from rival fish people, the Lemurians, and underwater baddies like Atuma and Lyra. Some of these underwater usurpers even allied with Wakandan rebels, which caused the Submariner and Black Panther to fight and then team up for the first time. But all that big king energy would more often than not put them at vicious odds again and again. Namor was also identified as a mutant, and he teamed up with both the evil mutants and the X-Men, but later became a conduit for the Phoenix Force, which he tried to use to destroy Wakanda. He even joined the Illuminati, the high council of Marvel's most brilliant and egomaniacal superheroes. And when the incursions of universes began destroying the multiverse and endangered our universe, Namor did what must be done. Listen, you can't always trust Namor to be friend or foe, hero or villain, damp or dry, but he'll always be king of the ocean. Life's a beach, and so is the Submariner. And now, you do know Namor.